Comic-Con is here, Jordan Peele's latest film hits theaters, and which star is making $100 million for a single movie? We're revealing all the mega salaries in Hollywood. It's all coming up right now on The Take. Welcome to The Take. I'm Elizabeth Wagmeister. And I'm Clayton Davison. We're here to give you our take on some of the week's biggest stories. And you had a great week this week because happy birthday. Thank you, Clayton. 21 years old. Oh, Look at you. You're yes. all grown up now. I had my first drink yeah. and you actually got me the best card ever. So thank you. I love you so <laughs> much. On. But let's dive into... One of the biggest stories of the week, Variety's annual salary report is out. That means that we are telling you what the biggest stars in Hollywood make, and trust me, it is a lot of money. Just wait until you find out which star made $100 million from a single film. But first, let's talk about the ones that aren't making very much. I mean, just $35 million per movie, right? I'm talking about Will Smith, who made $35 million for Emancipation, of course, he signed that deal and filmed that before the entire Oscars saga, but not far behind him, both Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt also made $30 million for upcoming films. Brad is for an upcoming movie about Formula One and Leo for Killers of the Flower Moon with Marty Scorsese. Now, Dwayne Johnson, one of the biggest stars in Hollywood, we all know he is about to be Black Adam. For the DC pick, he is making $22.5 million. It's a little chump change. Just right chump now. change. I mean, we're really talking about some high class problems here. And of course, these are the biggest stars in Hollywood. Not everybody is making these astronomical figures, but these are major, major paydays. And it just goes to show that with all of the content and so many competing platforms, that if you want a big star, these different platforms, particularly streaming, they are really shelling out the big bucks. Netflix has some of the biggest salaries. But it also raises the question, with so much content, how much longer will this continue? Because just having a big star in a film doesn't guarantee that you're going to have a huge uh, box office turn. Yeah. What's great about that list is if you are Tom Holland or you're Tom Cruise and you just surpassed Avengers as the highest grossing film domestically, mm -hmm. this only adds value to you in the future. However, I do want to note not very many women on that list that are making 20, 25 mil. And, you know, we want to see diversity. And that doesn't just mean people of color. Mm -hmm. It means all around, like, who are the money makers and who are the decision makers mm -hmm. to make these types of decisions for these artists? And I do want to note here that as we move forward, we don't know what the, the landscape of filmmaking is going to be. But we do know that TV is a plethora of stuff going on right now, shown by Kevin Costner and everyone that Taylor Sheridan Universe doing very, very well, including uh, Kevin Costner and Harrison Ford. Yes, so Kevin Costner, Harrison Ford, and Helen Mirren, who they are going to co-star in the upcoming show 1923 from that whole Yellowstone world, they're both making $1 million per episode, and Kevin Costner is making $1.25 million mm -hmm per episode. I'm glad that you brought up, first of all, the fact that there's not that many women on that list. It just yeah. shows the pay disparity in Hollywood. But also Tom Cruise, he is the one who made $100 million off of one film. And this is because Tom Cruise bets on himself and bets yeah. on his performance in the box office. He took a much lesser salary on Top Gun Maverick, but since, as you said, it's now surpassed Avengers to become the top domestic Bananas. performing film, over $1.3 billion yeah. worldwide. With the back end, he's made over $100 million. But now we transition to San Diego Comic-Con. Returning in person after two years, we are getting first looks at a lot of dragons. The Game of Thrones prequel series, House of Dragon, we got the first look this week, which will be airing on HBO. We also got a first look at Dungeons and Dragons. The adaptation of the popular series is coming with Reggae Jean Page and a slew of stars that are ready to blow up the internet when that debuts. But most notably, people are waiting to see what Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power is gonna look like for Amazon Prime. The most expensive show ever created at $465 million. Chump change for Jeff Bezos. And then now we wait to see what the MCU, Marvel, and DCEU from Warner Brothers, what they're gonna bring to the table. 
Marvel, we're we're looking at Phase Four. We haven't seen a uh, first trailer yet for Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen a first look at Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Mm-hmm. So let's see what this next iteration is, and that Fantastic Four cameo that was teased in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Let's see if we know who Mr. Fantastic will actually be, and if it is John Krasinski. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of news coming out of Comic Con. There always is. Have you ever been to Comic Con? No. Okay, so no. I used to cover it for us. I've been. We have a great team on the ground. Make sure to go to Variety.com for all of your coverage because they really are going to have everything. But it's really madness. And, of course, it's been on a halt throughout the pandemic. So this is the first year that it's back in full force as it is this year. Obviously, cosplay, lots of fans. Yeah. I think that now that there's the big return, even though the pandemic is very much still going on and we're seeing a spike in COVID here in LA, I think that the numbers are going to be astronomical with the turnout there. And I'm curious to see the news. But speaking of movies and fans, there's a big movie coming out today. Yes, <laughs> and it is Nope from Jordan Peele, his third directorial feature starring Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer, and Steven Yun. Tells the story of UFOs, sort of. It's been all very vague in the trailer. I have seen the film, and I think what we have here for Jordan Peele, and this is a hot take because we saw Jordan Peele's response to a Mm -hmm. fan saying that he was the best horror director of all time. Jordan Peele responded with, you're not going to shade John Carpenter like that. He essentially said nope. (laughs) He said nope. He said nope, I am not. However, I do want to say, I think we are looking at our modern day Alfred Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. And I have a piece on Variety right now about that. And that's not saying that his three films stands up to the likes of Psycho and Dial M for Murder and North by Northwest. But I think 20, 25 years from now, we're going to look back and we're all going to have a conversation. What's your favorite Jordan Peele movie? Mm -hmm. And we're all going to spew out some different answers. Mm -hmm. I think he is that type of filmmaker that is making something that's distinct with each outing. Mm -hmm. They're not always a home run and not everything should be a home run. But this movie... It's very interesting. It's going to be probably his most polarizing, though. But I I dug it a lot, and I think Daniel Kaluuya, and Kiki Palmer especially, is really good in it. You know, I think that you really make a great point. And as you said, it is a hot take to say he's the modern-day Hitchcock, but he's doing what no one else has done in horror, certainly in modern times for cinema. He completely revitalized the genre. They've been huge at the box office and also getting awards recognition. Horror is usually not a genre that you see up at the Oscars and starting with Get Out that really put him on the map, then us, now no. I mean, I do have to reveal something though to put you on the spot. The first thing that you told me when you saw it is you said, Elizabeth, don't see it. It's really scary. You're not a fan of horror movies. You're not going to like it. I'm just playing off the bat. It's not that I don't like horror movies. It's that I'm too scared to see them in a theater because I'll scream. So I will watch it on my couch. But you did tell me not to see it in theaters. Now, moving on to a tragic story that hit headlines this week. A crew member on the set of Law & Order Organized Crime was violently killed on the set in New York City this week. This was a crew member who arrived early. He was part of the parking enforcement that worked for a company that was hired by the production. He was in his car and around 5.15 a.m. was ambushed by a shooter who still has not been found, is still on the loose, who killed him. When he was brought to the hospital, he was pronounced dead right there on the scene. This is obviously a tragic story and there's many questions and authorities are still looking into who was involved. Did they know each other? We're not sure. We don't have those answers yet. But the reason why this is significant, particularly in our business, is New York for the past decade, but certainly the past five years, has been booming with production and it's been safe. And obviously we're seeing a rise in crime in New York, also right here in LA. And it raises the question that these productions, which are outdoors, and particularly in New York City, there's always cameras rolling. You always see things filming on the street. Are people going to feel safe? Is this going to scare people? How are they going to really enforce safety measures? But again, we don't know all the details for this. We don't know if they knew each other, if it was personal, or if it really just was a random crime. Yeah. I mean, this is tragic all around. He's He was a father of six. That's what, like, breaks my heart into a million pieces. But looking further, it happened in arguably the safest neighborhood in Brooklyn, Mm -hmm. which is very indicative. But looking ahead, the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, is at a really unpopular level right now. Mm -hmm. New Yorkers are not happy with the job he's doing. Crime is up. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are happening. Is this going to 
create more hesitation to shoot in New York City. Mm -hmm. It's not like in LA where there's studio, you know, you can go under like on a, a closed set. On, mm -hmm. on a closed set. This is on the street. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this will affect people moving forward. But it, again, it's tragic. Hopefully they find this this man that, that killed him. And our prayers are with his family, with everyone in New York. Absolutely. It's just a heartbreaking story. But you're from New York. I lived there for almost 10 years. We love the city, and it is one of the greatest places for production. So Absolutely. much more to come on that sad story. Thank you, as always, for joining us right here on The Take, and we'll see you again on Fridays. Thanks for watching.